All right, guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Cody Groom. If you guys watched my last video talking about the Supra, I was talking about how I didn't like the two-tone wheels. Actually, like three doors down, we have a powder coating company. So it should be pretty cool to actually get these powder coated one color. I'm gonna do, um, well, you have to wait and see. It's, it's a, it might match the, the United 2 M3 a little bit. But yeah, so literally took these off. It's funny, like there's all the BMW parts underneath, BMW rotors, all that stuff. Um, but literally right in front of me too, off camera, is a set of coilovers. So those will be going on too. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that. I'm gonna go drop these off at powder coating, come back, and then I'll show you guys once they're done with how they look. All right, I just figured I'd unbox this for you guys on camera. the rear spring. Can't wait to drive it with these. All right, guys. So I've never done this before, but today I'm going to change some coilovers and uh, have some KW coilovers. Uh, these are the rear ones right here, the rear shocks right here, but um, I've never done this before. And the whole point of a lot of this stuff is like, I'm learning with you guys or you guys are learning with me or you guys are just watching me screw it up. But, but yeah, I think, I think the best way to learn how to do anything is to try to do it. I don't know if this is the best car to learn on, on my 2020, 2021 Supra, but we're gonna do it on this car and uh, hope it all goes well. So the other side was a bit of a learning experience for sure. Um, like I mentioned, you guys, it's my first time putting on coilovers. Had it, my dad helped me out, um, called up Alvin at one point from 3RA, 3RA Motorworks to help me. Um, but the hardest part of this, so basically there's all the little electric parts that come out, little sensors, um, and sway bar comes out right here, over here. Um, and then you loosen up this down here lower control arm loosen up this i don't think you guys can see that down there but just loosen up that and on the top of the actual um shock there is four uh four four bolts that come out and then this whole thing has to tilt forward but the problem is there's a little thing back here that you basically have to like wedge a pry bar in the back and then push this down and get that to come out and that was the hardest part about the other side so now this side's been moving a lot faster so far, but we'll see once we get to that step, if it's quick, if it's not, but this side should be a lot faster. I don't know if you saw, because it was kind of a tighter shot, but I had Ryan basically pushing down on this while I was putting a pry bar uh, through the back, just to open it up, but gonna keep moving through. Okay, cool. Got it. All right. Boom. All right. On the back right now. Um, so I have a couple little sensors right here and cables. I think they're ABS and one's a shock, actual shock sensor too. Got that out, cool. Um, and then I just need this right here taken out. So I, there you go, cool. That's out. All right, sweet. Just these, I'm gonna start undoing these bolts. Didn't have the right tool for this. It worked, but leave it to European cars to have some like bolt like this. So it's like a E-Torx. How far am I? Boom. I'll hit the paint. 
Boom. Let's get it. All right, so we're headed to 3RA right now. Basically the top hat of the of the shock There's obviously a spring that's under load right there and I don't want to Test taking it off and have the spring shoot off because I don't have a spring press I'm not gonna try to like inch it off without that. I just figured it'd be easier to go over there drop it off real quick um, Have them do it if they have some time. I'm not sure if they're gonna have time, but I'm gonna try to fit it in real quick Should just be a, a quick job for someone that has the right tools Oh, almost forked in my finger. Nope. Motherfucker, get out! There we go. Oh! Breaking all your tools, Alvin. So, according to Alvin right now here at 3RA, these are shipping spacers. So, these are meant to make sure they don't bottom out when they're, on the, when they're actually shipping. But Toyota doesn't take these, Toyota, or maybe just that particular dealership, didn't take these off. That's not good. These should not be on your suspension. All right, so got that all wrapped up. So basically took those off so I can put those on the KWs. Now, the only issue I might run into, and I might have to just run back here real quick, um, is if I can't slip the, the new spring over the coilover, right, over the, or over the shock, I mean. If I can't slip that over and actually thread it, I'm gonna have to come back so we can compress the spring a little bit and actually get that thread on. Um, otherwise, if I can, I can just go ahead and do that, use an impact gun, you know, tighten it up, and we'll be good to go. All right guys, so now it's really time to put this thing back together. Um, so obviously the front coilover needs to go in, right? The rear needs to go in. Um, we already took the top hat off the rear um, shock, the OEM shock, put it on here. So this just needs to go back in. Um, when we were doing the other side, we did, I did the other side off camera just to like, I did, I did a little time lapse of it, but I didn't record a lot because I wanted to make sure I was kind of like, making sure I knew what I was doing, testing through it. And um, I don't know, it just was hard to film that part because I was like concentrating on putting this in. Um, but on the other side, we actually put this in backwards. So where the little brackets are for the cables, we put in backwards and we had to take the whole thing back apart and flip it around. So, but this is pretty much everything that is left to put back. Um, I, am, I did get a set of Future Classic spacers um, running a 15 in the front, 18 in the rear, just to get those tires nice and flush. Um, hopefully it's not too aggressive. I guess we'll find out once the car is lowered on the ground and uh, we'll see how it is. But yeah, so pretty much right now, I'm just gonna get started on everything and uh, get this thing back together. All right, so uh, just putting together the uh, spring real quick. So I watched a video and someone said the helper spring goes on top, but according to KW, the helper spring's on bottom. So I'm gonna follow what KW says and not a YouTube video I watched. Um, but yeah, this piece goes on top. This piece that separates the two. Right, and then this piece that's on bottom. That's all in.
basically I gotta jack up the spring, put some tension on it to get it to where I can actually mount the, uh, the bottom of the shock. Otherwise, if you guys look right here, this piece needs to line up with this. And the only way to get that is to bring it up, but obviously I can't just Hulk, Hulk smash this and get it to the top. So I gotta jack this up. Perfect. That's a win. Cool. Uh, just putting the nut on the other side right now. Uh, oh, or not. And uh, the shock is basically in. It's not tightened up. But now it's in. And now this should stay once I mount. So right now, I just need to go ahead and put the, uh, the bolt in right here. There's one more. This one's the hardest to line up because the, obviously the, the whole like rotor right here, the, uh, and the whole arm can move down right now independently from each other. So it's like you can jack it up and then they start jacking up together and then you kind of have to like move this and fiddle with it to get the bolt actually in. So this hole right here, this one, you can see like this. So this can move independently compared to this. So just kind of moving it to get it to line up. Uh, basically the other side is not lined up right now. So I'm just trying to make it a little more even. So now I just gotta attach all the wires. So let's see this right here, the rear. All right, so right now we basically have EDC delete going on. Um, I would've thought this was held on a different way, but it's really just this bracket, this right here, the EDC plugs into that. This side is double-sided taped, along with a zip tie around that goes around the uh, shock. Zip tie smarter, smarter than me right now. Cables are all clear. Sweet. I had Ryan help me off camera, just put the actual coilover in, um, just because there's no way I'm gonna be able to bolt the top part and hold this in place at the same time. So right now it's just finger tightened up top, and then I just need to bring the actual everything up. I'm gonna use it in my hand just to line it up. And then once I get it lined up, I'm gonna go ahead, actually I need to jack it up a little bit. This thing is finally done. Um, first off, there was a big part that we didn't include in this because we didn't know what the actual, but long story short, we figured it out. There was, there was something loose on the top hat. And so when we went to test it, it was making kind of like a creak over bumps and the actual whole shock was moving down just, just slightly. It wasn't like it was gonna fall out, nothing like that, but moving down a little bit. So we ended up fixing that, but we haven't actually dialed in the ride height. With this, you can see, I mean, honestly, 
that's a pretty good ride height. I think any lower and you gotta worry about scraping, but at the same time, the inner child in me goes, it needs to be a little bit lower. The adult in me goes, leave it at adult ride height. But the rear definitely needs to go a little bit lower. Overall though, I'm pretty happy with it. We drove it and honestly, it drives really good. I noticed a huge difference from stock suspension to KW. Just like, it just felt more refined. I could feel the road a little more because it was stiffer, but also just like the way the car handled, I'm, I'm really happy with it. The wheels went into doing what's called, I believe it's Watts Gold or it's Waltz Gold, something like that, with clear vision over the top. So it's basically a powder coat, the clear over the top, and I think it came out pretty good. So it's a slightly different color than the E92 M3, which has a satin poly gold. But overall, I mean, I feel like this just really transformed the way the wheel setup looked. Because these are forged wheels, they are a nice set of wheels. I did want to keep these in the car for a little bit until I decided to go something later on. Um, but yeah, here it is in all of its glory. So. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. Leave me a comment if you got something to say. Catch you guys in the next one. Later!